am live from a different location and it is Sunday, March 21st. And I wanted to do this live, even though I am away from my home overnight, taking a little mini break with my sister Kathy. And I wanted to come on here and talk quickly. It's not gonna be a long live. Um, I wanna talk about stress reduction for parents and professionals in the autism world. I have enough. And since I am away from home, I thought I'll give you some tips on how to reduce stress if you think your child might have autism or if your child or clients do have autism. And um, so if you are here, I see Lily is already here from Australia. She has not missed a session and Get Gel is already here too. Samantha is her name and from Melbourne, Florida. Awesome. So introduce yourself in the comments if you can. Heather's here on YouTube. Excellent. Um, and if you've missed any of the live broadcasts, I've been going live every day in March in anticipation of my book coming out. And I'm sorry, it's backwards on YouTube. That's the um, <laughs> best I can do. I'm sure there's a way I could figure out how to turn that around, but not going to risk it. TurnAutismAround.com has all the details, including a two-minute book trailer. Gives you all the details about the book. Uh, then you can figure out how to order the book, either through Amazon, International Order, Target, Walmart, Book, uh, Books a Million. Order your book, and for just another day or two, it was supposed to close last week, but the book launch team is still open. It is now ha has 700 plus um over 700 parents, professionals, grandparents in that launch team group. You're able to read the first three chapters, watch some exclusive videos of me interviewing Dr. Temple Grandin, who wrote the foreword for the book. Um, so you have one, maybe two more days to get into that group. It's really a great group. I um, am giving away some prizes. So turn autismaround.com if you have any interest in the book. Now's the time to get it and get all the bonuses. Okay, so let us see who else is here. We have somebody from Hawaii. I've been to Hawaii three times, maybe four. <laughs> I think I was there three times to speak and because I was on this board of Autism Training Solutions. And then I was there a year ago, Christmas time. Um, which was amazing. I went to Oahu each and every time and never made it to another island. I've been to Australia three times as well, all to speak about autism. Been to Florida many times. Alabama is here. Um, don't think I've ever been to Alabama. But um, for those of you that don't know me, I have been in the autism world for over two decades. First as a very confused and overwhelmed parent and then as a board certified behavior analyst, I'm a registered nurse for over three decades. I have a PhD. I've traveled around the world with my first book, The Verbal Behavior Approach, which is in over a dozen languages. And now my brand new book already uh, has been number one best bestselling, uh, new release in five different categories. It's coming out in one week and two days, which is uh, March 30th, it's a Tuesday it will be out. So if you pre-ordered it, it will hopefully be, be delivered that day or the next day. Um, we've already gone back for a second printing. It's gonna be big. I'm doing TV and radio interviews. So turn autismaround.com and um, for all the details. Dubai is here. Um, and this person is from Hawaii, the big island, which is excellent. Hopefully I'll make it there someday. I've never been to Dubai. Um, either. I have had some inquiries into me traveling there. Thank goodness I had like zero requests to um, or zero uh, bookings to to travel internationally or even to speak nationally because I was so focused on my book and my online courses that um, when 2020 came I had plans to go places, but nothing that was, you know, I was speaking, I was holding my own uh, live event or anything like that. 
So I think we're moving towards more and more online, less and less travel, but hopefully we get some travel for fun in the very near future. And that is actually one of my tips. So let's talk about stress, um, stress and autism and ways that you can think about reducing stress. So um, back when Lucas started showing signs and was diagnosed the day before his third birthday in 1999, I was very sleep deprived. I was a stay-at-home mom with two boys, 18 months apart. My husband's a physician. He was working a lot of shift work. He's an ER physician. Now he's an administrator and still an ER physician, but his shifts back then were, were like a lot of overnights and different shifts per different day. So I was like hunkering down with my two kids, one with a new diagnosis of autism and Spencer <clears throat> is 18 months younger. And Lucas didn't sleep well. He didn't sleep well for 10 years and um, until I finally figured out how to teach him to sleep and how to teach my clients to sleep. And so there is a chapter in this book all about sleep. Um, but um, so I was sleep deprived and somebody early on told me that they would recommend a couple of things. They would recommend that my husband and I take vacations or at least go overnight once a month, which we never did. But, you know, that was their advice because marriages are in jeopardy too, especially when you're playing musical beds and there's, there's lots of stress. Um, so that was one thing, but what I took from that is I needed to learn more because I was completely overwhelmed and I had a master's degree in nursing. I'm like, this can't be that hard to figure out, but it was. And there, so I would literally go to autism conferences to learn and to sleep in a hotel bed by myself in my own room. <laughs> and so that was, I took many vacations. You wouldn't think that going to autism conferences would be a stress reliever, but I think for me, like learning was really motivating and sleeping in my own bed through the night was very motivating. And so that combination was good for me. Um, <clears throat> I also think some advice that I got from Dr. James Copeland, who I did a podcast interview with. So if you want to hear that podcast interview after this is done, you can search Mary Autism Dr. Copeland, C-O-P-L-A-N, and you should get that. But one of the pieces of advice, which is in my first book, when, when Dr. Copeland diagnosed Lucas, is he said, he thought um, we should, um, Charles and I should go away by ourselves. Charles, me, and Spencer should go places with the three of us. We should go with four of us, including Lucas. Sometimes me and Lucas should go away or go places with just the two of us. Sometimes me and Spencer, sometimes my husband and Lucas. So different configurations. So when he diagnosed Lucas, he's like, there are some places that Lucas isn't going to be able to go or he's going to have a problem. So I would, um, don't let that stress you out. Like, and in over the past two decades, we have, the three of us have traveled to Europe. That's not a plane ride that Lucas could tolerate. And he would have no fun. Like he would not be into it. So over the years, I think one of the, that was really good advice. So the one is maybe you go away by yourself. Now it doesn't have to be an autism conference. You could go away to a spa or with a girlfriend or with a friend. Um, go to somebody's beach house and stay overnight, like whatever you can to kind of take a break because this is a marathon, not a sprint. And I say it's a marathon on a roller coaster. And the more we can kind of separate ourselves. And the other thing that does is it helps somebody else take care of your child. And knowing that you're not the only person in the world that can handle your child is a blessing. And your child also has to learn to communicate um, with another individual. So shoring up more support so that you can get away, or maybe you and your typical child, like there's been postings on, on groups, like 
I want to bring my typically developing child to Disney World. I don't think my my child my child with autism will do well, and I you know I kind of want the whole family to go, and it's going to be really expensive for him to want to sit in the hotel room, and so. Some of the stress reduction, I think, is just to stop thinking like everything's got to look perfect. You know, we went on a family cruise that I ended up winning as part of a marketing competition. We went on a family cruise with 14 or 15 of us and left Lucas at home. Um, that, you know, that was a decision. But I think in the end, it was a really good decision because Lucas wouldn't have been comfortable there he wouldn't have liked it I like he doesn't have enough language to tell me if he wants to do something or not but I as his parent and guardian and know him um I know what he would like and what he wouldn't like and and it's stressful to bring um a child somewhere if you know it's going to be a disaster or you think that it might be a disaster so um, really planning, I think, assessing. We can even use the four-step turn autism around approach, assessing the situation, like how well, you know, the autism spectrum's huge. And bringing Lucas and Spencer to Disney World when they were really young in a double stroller and a single stroller, like they did, Lucas did well enough to not, you know, all bringing little kids to Disney World is is a problem. Like, it, it can be stressful and um, it takes a lot of work. So, anyway, assess the situation, but don't have these, the, the idea, like, what would this look like if I left my child with autism with my parents or with a trusted loved one? Um, because you only have, like, your child has only one life, but you have only one life too. So I do think that getting away and doing stuff in different configurations are two big stress relievers. Um, at the end of my podcast episodes, when I interview somebody, I always say part of my podcast goals are for parents and professionals to be less stressed and lead happier lives. And um, so I ask for tips and Grandma Diane, really was a great interview early on and she recommended like planning vacations because quarterly because she's like i'm either planning it on a vacation or coming out of a vacation um and these vacations like you might think well i have no money i can't go on vacation but you know think out of the box these can be like little day trips or fun times uh they can be really inexpensive too you could do a picnic in the park um, just really try to plan things so that you have something to look forward to. Um, another great tip that I got from Kate Swenson from Finding Cooper's Voice when she was interviewed on my podcast number 70, marybarbera.com forward slash 70, is she said her house got really loud because Cooper, her son, wouldn't wear headphones and his iPad, he would just volume out the, you know, really high. So she got a uh, volume restrictor app on his iPad, a volume reducer or noise reduction on um, a volume reducer, I think is what it was called. And I was like, what? I had never heard of that. And Lucas does wear headphones, but he would get overstimulated by constantly turning it up. So I know that tip alone, and I can Google and, and put it in here if anybody wants to know, but just Google volume reducer app on iPad or iPhone. And um, that's been a real godsend to us. And Lucas's overexcitement, which t turned into a, a, a agitation really, um, uh, really improved. Heather said, how do you remember the numbers of all your podcasts? I don't, I just remember the ones that I constantly give out. <laughs> um, so I don't know Grandma Diane's, although I give that out a lot. So you can always search Mary Autism, whatever I say, if I say there's a podcast or a video blog, or even if I don't say it, if you're like, gosh, I'm really wondering about this. It's a topic that I'm struggling with. Just search Mary Autism plus your topic and it'll probably pop up. Okay, so planning vacations, doing day trips, working in different configurations within your family. Don't feel like you have to bring all four of you to every event um, in order for um, it to look somehow, some way. And just really um, getting um, 
Somebody said, I need your personal number, please. No, <laughs> um, that's not a way to reduce my stress at all. In fact, I am very, very protective of my phone number. And we are a very um, small online business. And um, so we, we do everything over email. So if you have a, um, a request or a question specifically about our books or our courses or any of our online offerings, you can always contact us through our website, marybarbera.com. But you cannot call me. That is for sure. Anyway, so um, those are some um, stress reducers. Now, there's also a lot of research to show that people that meditate, journal, um, exercise, exercise outside, these are all um, stress reducers too. Um, I can't say that I have been... Um, very consistent with any of those except for maybe walking outside that's been more more and more consistent um, I have done meditation and journaling in the past I just can't really get into it that that well but um you know studies have shown that really successful people that are have less stress um, in their lives do meditate journal and exercise so that's what I got for you today. I thought I would come on and uh, just talk about stress reducers and getting away and taking a break and knowing that this is a marathon, not a sprint. And, um, um, okay, uh, any questions about stress reducers? A little nervous to try to figure out. I'm on two different systems here. Um, one is YouTube and one is Facebook. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, I can't really see these these messages. I can see them as they pop up, but then that's about it. Um, okay, so that's what I got for you today. Hopefully, um, you enjoy the podcast interviews that I do, and I ask people at the end how to how they have reduced stress and lead happier lives. Um, this Tuesday, my husband is interviewed for the podcast um, that's coming out on Tuesday. And the following Tuesday, on March 30th, my book comes out, Turn Autism Around. You should pre-order it now um, at turnautismaround.com. On March 30th, the interview, the whole interview with Dr. Temple Grandin comes out as a podcast so if you haven't subscribed to the podcast you may want to go on anywhere you listen to podcasts subscribe also leaving a five-star review uh rating um, that sort of thing helps me get the word out too so if you haven't done any of that um keep going keep pushing tell everybody you know turnautismaround.com for all the information i want to empower parents and grandparents and professionals and I want to change the way autism is detected and treated around the world forever with my book and my courses and my movement that I'm creating. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. So I'll be on tomorrow for another episode of my live shows. And then after that, I'm going to be live through March 30th at least when the book comes out. Thanks so much. Have a great night and I'll talk to you later. Bye.